Never have I heard it asked or answered, why is a fountain pen called a fountain pen? Uh, why not a controlled leak pen? Well, okay, uh, Donovan, uh, essentially a fountain pen is a controlled leak, right? Like basically the way that fountain pens are designed is you have the pen itself, you have a reservoir of ink up here. I should use a clear pen to show you it a little bit better. Here we go, you have a reservoir of ink up here. You have the nib of which, I actually don't have one on this pen, that's kind of ironic. Uh, but you have the nib down here, there's a feed, you can see it, but you have the nib down here and the air is exchanging with the ink as it's flowing out of the pen. So you have the feed up top here, the ink is flowing out through the nib. You have this channel on the bottom where air is flowing in. Otherwise, you would not have uh, a proper, um, uh, what's it called, pressure, whatever, relieving exchange thing. Sort of like if you have a straw in a glass of water and you hold the top of the straw, you lift it up, the water stays in there. If you didn't have the air interchanging, it wouldn't flow. So you need that important relationship. That's kind of the basic fundamentals of the physics of how a fountain pen works. But basically, why is it called a fountain pen? That's a great point. So uh, let me get into just a, a just, I'm gonna very much talk, talk on the surface level of fountain pen history way back in the day, like 1700s, 1800s. The way that you wrote was with a dip pen or a quill, you know, like a literally like a feather quill that was cut and kind of shaped so that you could dip it into an ink well, like a bottle of ink. You would dip it and then you'd write and you'd dip it and you'd have to dip it every so often. Um, and it was kind of inconvenient. If ever you wanted to write, you had to carry the bottle and the quill or whatever with you, probably several of them because they would wear out. As you know, metal kind of became more prevalent uh, in being able to be shaped for nibs and stuff like that. You had to like the dip pens and stuff like that, but it was still you had to dip constantly back and forth. So it was actually quite revolutionary when the fountain pen was developed in the late 1800s because you could actually carry your ink with you in your pen. So you would have an ink well inside your pen. So if you think about what, ooh, I just ripped a little ink. If you have an, a well, then that means that you are going to have an ink spillage on your desk. Give me a second. <laughs> I'm distracted by this. Okay. If you have a, an, a well, think about it like a water well, like old school, like you got to pump the well, like it's work. You have to pull it out of the ground to get your water from your well, right? So if you think about that like an ink well, you are having to dip and work to get that ink out of there versus think about a fountain. It gushes out. It pours out on its own as opposed to a well where you have to try to get it out of there. So that's where the name fountain pen originally came about was as these pens with these internal ink reservoirs came about, they were referred to a fountain in comparison to a well because it just, it just flows on its own out of the pen as you write. So that's literally why it's called a fountain pen. Isn't that cool? So, a little bit of history there for you. I don't know who exactly came up with the term. I did a little research to try and find out who. I didn't really see who. Maybe some of you who are like really into the vintage pen history stuff can correct me on that and, and educate me a little bit. I would love that if you can post in the comments. That'd be fantastic. Or if you know of any great resources there. Um, so anyway, that's what's up.